Upeka Vendibona and from this episode we are going to discuss about the link time and run time errors in C++. A program consists of several separately compiled parts called translation units. Every function in a program must be declared with exactly the same type in every translation unit in which it is used. Every function must also be defined exactly once in a program. If either of these rules is violated, the linker will give an error. I'll explain this by writing a code in NetBeans IDE. This is the main.cpp file and it includes the main function. I'm going to create another C++ source file in the source files folder and the file name is new file and in this new file I'm going to create a function to calculate the area of a rectangle. It returns a int value, the name of the function is area and the parameters are int length and int width. In the function body it returns length multiplied by width. So this is the area function. In our main function I'm going to call this area function. The arguments are 3 and 2. And I'm going to assign the return value into a int variable area rect. Now let's try to save this program and execute. Here you can see build is failed. That is because we have to define the area function that we have used in here because that area function is in another file. We have to put the definition, this is the definition of the function and put that in here with the semicolon. Let's clear the console and try to execute the file. And this time you can see it compiled perfectly. Now what happened here was, as we have defined the area function in another source file, and link the code generated from that source file to this code, the linker complained that it didn't find the definition of the area function. And that's why we put the definition in the file where it includes the caller. Now the definition of area function must have exactly the same type. That means both the written type and the argument types as we used in our file. Let's look at the source file again. Now I did a little bit change in our new file. We have three area functions. The first area function takes int arguments. The second area function takes double arguments. And the third area function takes three arguments. The first two are int and the third one is a char. But inside the main function I am calling the area function with the double arguments. And the value is assigned to a double variable. But in the definition in that file, I am using the first one. I am calling this area function, but at the definition I am using this function. Now let's see what would happen if I execute this file. You can see the first function is being called. Now if I change this definition into the second function, the double parameter function, let's see what would happen. And execute this file it calls the second function the double function that means functions with the same name but different types will not match and will be ignored note that a misspelled function name doesn't usually give a linker error instead the compiler give an error immediately when it sees a call to an undeclared function and that's good. Compile time errors are found earlier than link time errors and are typically easier to fix. So I hope now you got the basic idea of what are the link time errors. There are a lot more to talk about the link time errors 
anyway that is not under our scope now let's move on to runtime errors if your program has no compile time errors and no link time errors it will run this is where the fun really starts when you write the program you are able to detect errors but it is not always easy to know what to do with an error once you catch it at the runtime take a look at this example here we have two custom functions area function and framed area function Area function calculates the area of a rectangle and framed area function do the same but here length and width is reduced by 2. Inside the main function we have 3 int variables x, y, z and notice that the variable x have a negative value and then it begins the function calls. Now tell me what is the value of the variable area 1. Here it is passing the arguments x and y that means minus 1 and 2. So minus 1 multiplied by 2 is minus 2. The area 1 variable have the value minus 2. Now what is the value of the area 2? It has the return value from the framed area function. In the framed area function both the length and width have to be subtracted by 2. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1 z is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, so minus 1 multiplied by 2 is minus 2. So the area 2 variable also got the value minus 2. Now what is the value of the area 3? So y is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and z is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, 0 multiplied by 2 is 0. So area 3 got the value 0. These values make no sense when you considering it as a area of a rectangle. Anyway, that is what we have obtained. Now take a look at the calculation of the third variable ratio. What is the wrong with that calculation? Now remember the value of the variable area 3 is 0. So now here it is trying to divide it by 0. This leads to hardware detected error that terminates the program with some cryptic message relating to the hardware. This is a kind of error that you will have to deal with if you don't detect and deal sensibly with the runtime errors. Just for now, let's keep this divided by zero thing aside and move into the problem of having minus values for rectangular areas. To tackle the problem of having argument errors with the area function, we can do two things. Make the caller of the area function deal with the bad arguments or else make the area function deal with bad arguments. Let's try the first alternative first. Actually this is not the solution for this situation but if the area was a function in a library where we couldn't modify it then this is the only solution. Let's see this solution with the NetBeans IDE. Now this is the corrected program. Let's see what's inside the main method. In the main method, we got the two variables x and y, which we meant the use input for the area, length and width. The first thing we have to do is checking the values of the variables x and y, whether they are lesser than or equal to 0. If they are lesser than or equal to 0, we have to give a error message. So here, if the variable x is lesser than or equal to 0, it will output the error message non-positive x. Now this error function is a custom function as exception handling is not inside of a scope we created a function like this. So here it takes the error message and we output the error message and terminates the program because there is no purpose of executing all the other codes after having an error. So after checking the values we have to call the area functions. If the values for the x and y are ok, then the area function being called. Now remember, to give you the feeling of the area function is in the library, we created the area function in another file. So here, the area function takes the arguments length and width and it will return the multiplication of the length and width. So in the top of this file, we have defined the area function as the area function is in another file. With all the checking for the variable x and y for being 0 or lesser than 0, 
we get a perfect value for the variable area 1. Now for the variable area 2, it assigns the value returns from the function framed area. In the framed area function, we reduce the frame size from the length and width. If you can remember in the framed area function, it is not a function in the library. We also define the framed area function in the same file. So in the framed area function, we have to reduce the frame size. As the frame size is a constant value, rather than hard coding the value 2, here we defined a constant called frame size and assign the value 2 into it. We always need to avoid hard coding things if we can create constants. So the ideal way to reduce the frame size is using a constant variable frame size. Now the new variables with reduced frame size are new x and new y. And then we need to check the values of the new x and new y because only checking x and y being 0 or lesser than a 0 is not enough. Again we need to check for that for the new variables. So if they are equal to 0 or lesser than 0 we need to output an error. So again it calls the error function by passing the message non-positive frame x and non-positive frame y. So if the values are ok then we can call the area function with the new variable values with reduced frame size. So this is how we can correct the program. We didn't touch the library function, the area function, but we did everything that we have the accessibility. I need to mention again, exception handling is not something like this. This is just only a function that we use to handle the errors. As exception handling is not under our course, we can do something like this just for the moment. In this error function, we print out the error message and exit the whole program. Now in this program, for the variable x, it have the value 3 and for the variable y, it have the value 0. So at this point, it should give us an error for having the value 0 for the variable y non-positive y. Let's see whether we can obtain such kind of an error at that point. Yes, we got the error non-positive y and it not executed all the other code lines below into it. Now let's see what would happen if we change the value of the variable y into 2. At the framed area function, it will give us the error non-positive frame y because the new variable value y becomes 0. Checking just only the x and y is not enough. We also need to check the values of the new variables after reducing the frame size. Let's see whether we can obtain such kind of an error non-positive frame y when we execute this program. Yes, we got the error we expected. The x and y values for the area 1 are ok but not for the area 2. The new x and y values are not ok so we terminate at that framed area function. So this is how the caller handles the bad arguments, our first solution. If the area function is not accessible, if it is in a library, then you can do something like this. Checking every argument in everywhere it being called. The second solution is callly deals with the bad arguments, the function being called, which means the area function deals with the bad arguments. If the callly is under our control, then this is the ideal solution rather than the first solution. So in this solution, we do not need this error checking in the framed area function as well as in here. So I'm going to cut this and paste it into the area function. So here I'm going to check the argument length for lesser than or equal to 0 and for the width lesser than or equal to 0. Non-positive width and non-positive length. You can see we reduced our code in here. We are not going to check for errors in the framed area function as well as in here. We are only checking the errors in the callee, the function that is being called. The value of the variable x is 3 and the value of the variable y is 2. 
That means when we calling the framed area function, the program should be terminated. When we reduce the frame size, the new value of the variable y becomes 0. So here we should obtain the error non-positive width. Let's see whether we can obtain such kind of an error when we execute this program. Oops, we got a build failed. Let's check the error. It says error was not declared in this scope. You can click the error and it will direct you to the error. So now what is the problem in here? When we use a function, the function should be defined before using the function. That means you need to cut this part and paste it above where you use it. Or else you can put just only the declaration of the function. This is the declaration part, so I'm going to put that part above where we call the function. Let's clear the console and again try to execute this. Yes, we got the error non-positive width, the error we have expected. And that's all what we got here in this episode. From here, we talked about link time errors as well as runtime errors. From the next episode, we are going to talk about what is meant by the scope in C++. Thank you for watching and stay tuned on with Edupedia World. <laughs>